What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We are back with another 400 video and we are going to be talking about headlights. Once again, this thing has plenty of lighting, but specifically we're going to be talking about headlights and the Aiden James vampire fangs here. So everybody, everybody, literally everybody out there has Alpharex or Morimoto's in different variations like Alpha Black, Black, or Morimoto Sequentials, or whatever. And don't get me wrong, love me some Morimotos, we rock them ourselves, but we have got to have a change in headlight styling. So, here is the GTR lighting headlights for the 5th Gen 4Runner. So here is the GTR lighting headlights for the 5th Gen 4Runner. And you can see right away, the styling is very, very different from the other brands that we personally have put on a million times on literally every Tacoma 4Runner that comes through Colorado or even everywhere in the Toyota world. So we've got the DRL down here and it splits out into two different directions whereas other brands you see like a whole thing a thing that goes around and they're all kind of similar. This one, pretty cool. One goes up and you got two stripes going down and then the jewel eyes in here are what differentiates this headlight from all the other ones. They're like very luxurious looking jewel eyes. The only thing we think would make this better is to get rid of the chrome make it like a matte black or something some sort of black chrome just pops out a little too much but we do like the styling how it's different and it looks very good and we'll show you the functionality as well um, the output on these are very very good it doesn't compare as good to the Morimoto's because pricing wise these are a lot more affordable but for the price um, output is very very good just took this wheeling over the weekend and um, did great and uh, we'll show you guys turn on the lights and show you guys the startup sequential and all the cool stuff that it actually does and while the lights are on we'll show you these Agent James vampire fangs as well so this is actually, when you're turning on the turn signals, you'll see that the switchback DRLs will go to amber. This will go to amber. Start up, they're both white, but they'll both go to amber and blink sequential, which is pretty cool. And it just gives the Forerunner a different look. So let's turn it on and uh, show you guys the cool lights features. All right, here's a startup sequence. Goes up, down, back, flashes, blinks. Pretty cool sequence. And we did turn the uh, camera down, brightness down a little bit so we, get, so we could see the lights a little bit better. But sequence is pretty cool. And you can see here, there's two little stripes going down. Turn on the headlights real quick. Boom, boom. So these two are your low beams, inside is your high beam, just like regular or the other headlights. Inside one's always gonna be high beams, but. All right, I'm gonna turn on the signal, turn signal, and you guys can see this go to amber here. See, that's, that is bad, bad, bad. Going from white to amber and giving a sequential. That looks real nice. So the first step on getting to the headlights are gonna be popping off these clips, push it down, and then just grab it up. Do the same to all of them. Then you'll be able to remove this entire cowl up here. Once you have the cowl off, this is what it'll look like. Next, we will need to take this clip here so pry that with a flathead or something similar and then pull that 
off. And then we'll need to take this 10 millimeter out right there. And then the last one is gonna be under here. So pull that back. So those will be it for the top part of the headlight. And then moving down to here to the fender and the bumper area, you will need to pop this 10 millimeter off. And then on our truck, we don't have the fender liner here because we did a Viper cut, but if yours has it, go ahead and take any other bolts that you have down there off. Then go ahead and get a plastic pry tool or something that won't damage your bumper or your paint. Um, then we'll pull back the liner um, if you guys do have liners right here and then we will need to pop some clips off in here there's a little black piece right in there pry it off and this whole piece will come off like so so right in this area there's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt right underneath the corner of this headlight go ahead and take that off On the top part of the grill, there is going to be another 10 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and take that off. And then on the other side, there's another one of those plastic clips that you can pop off as well. And you guys can do this in a different order if you guys really want to. We're just moving from one side to the other pretty much. Next up, we will need to pull this upper part of the grill out. Go ahead and just grab it from the one corner. Pull it away. They're just held in to these little clip areas here, so they're pretty easy to pop off. Then we need to take this 10 millimeter bolt off as well. Now all the screws that are holding the headlights on should be off. We'll reach right here to this bracket on the corner pop it away from the clear piece that was um, where the screw goes into. Now we should be able to wiggle the headlight loose. It's like so. Then we can go ahead and disconnect all the bulbs that are attached to it. Be real careful with this corner here just because it is sharp. Um, this one is kind of the area where it would normally scratch your headlight when you guys are actually putting your headlight back on. So be mindful of that when you guys are reinstalling the headlights. So we got the new headlight here. We're going to be plugging in a couple of things to the back of it like this one with the yellow grommet. Just plugged in. It's right next to this box here. And then all these connectors, plug them back into your factory connectors. They all should only go in to their connectors. There's not really any duplicates. Once we have everything connected, we will carefully reinstall this. Once again, be careful of this corner. It's gonna scratch up your lens. I've done it myself on my truck. So just be careful of that. Keep the film on the lens so that way it protects it a little bit if you do scratch it on anything. And then just slowly fish your way around all the parts and bumpers and everything. And then you guys will try to line it back up with those factory holes and the one under there and it'll pop into the little clear piece I showed you guys earlier. And they all should line up to the factory locations. Then I'll go ahead and reinstall all your hardware. And don't forget the one on the side behind the bumper piece. Once you have all the hardware reattached, go ahead and start pushing your bumper back into place and then this back side will clip in to the little black clips I showed you guys earlier. And then reinstall your hardware. So that yellow 
connector, or that connector with a yellow grommet. We ran it all the way behind here, and we plugged it into the back of the uh, passenger side headlight where that box is, just like on the driver's side. And then next up, under the fuse box, pull the lid off, find the INJ fuse, grab the added fuse that comes with the headlights, plug it into the INJ fuse, and then once you have this routed where you need it to go, go ahead and close the lid on top of that. And then lastly, put your grill, upper grill, back on. That'll just slide directly towards the back from front to back. So just line up those tabs and then slide it in. Then install that 10 millimeter that was right there on the upper grill. Um, that's kind of the main bolt that's holding the upper grip together. And then we'll put this clip back on. Same for the other one on the other side. Then we can reinstall the cowl. Back on it. Line up the holes with all the rubber pieces that are sticking through. And then just reinstall all the clips. So what you need to do is just pop it so that way it's not recessed in there like that. And then just pop it in. And then push it down so that way it's flush like so. Alright, now let's pull the plastic wrap off. Those look pretty good. And we have already tested them before. We uh, put the bumper back on so we made sure everything works. But we'll go ahead and show you guys what it looks like now with the film off. So the first thing you guys will see is the activation mode. So the DRL on it starts up like that. There's the low beams using the middle and the outer bulb and then go do the high beams. Okay, high beam pops on the very inner bulb and then the turn signal, sequential turn signal. So, looks really good. So the installation for these headlights are pretty similar all around for all the headlights. There is one thing that you have to do that's a little different for these GTR headlights. All right, so the relay, the gray one, in between all these blue ones, I'm gonna pull that out, and from the right to the left, the second pin that's in there, you see we flattened that and pushed it out of the way. That way when you plug it in, it doesn't make contact. And you can see this is a regular one. All the pins are straightened. And if you have this one in, when you turn on the lights, the inner bulb, which is your high beam slash DRL bulb, will flicker if that pin is in contact. That's why you flatten this, plug that back in, and now you won't have any flickering issues. So when you guys do install these, and you got everything all plugged in, you turn the lights on and you see flickering on that high beam slash DRL inner bulb, just remember to pull this gray relay out flatten second pin from the right so the one away from the big pin on the left and that will fix your issue and that's the only thing that's different when installing these GTR lighting headlights other than that everything is pretty plug and play and similar to all the other headlights okay so in order to take this whole bezel out there is two ways really. One, you can take the entire bumper off. Two, you can peel back your liner and you can take it off that way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through from down here just because on this full runner we do have a Viper cut and we can have easy access to the back side of the, uh, the bezel. So it's gonna be a little hard to show you guys what we're doing behind there without taking the entire bumper off. So we took off the passenger side to show you guys what we're going to be doing or what it looks like back there. So behind there, there's going to be all these clips that you just 
have to squeeze and basically just feed through like any other clip but there is one this one right above the round part is going to be a white clip um, so this one kind of sandwiches this tab into the bumper so what you need to do is just squeeze that white clip push it through and then that'll be free and then the rest of these you can just squeeze and push through so if you guys are doing it from the bottom where you can just push back the liner um, you can do it like this like how we're doing just squeeze your hand up in there and then with the other hand you can hold on the front side kind of just give it pressure away from the vehicle as you push on those tabs and pull it through and then right there towards um, Gabe's thumb is where the white clip's going to be which we have already pulled off so we just need to squeeze it and you can kind of see here the bezel is coming away from the actual vehicle and then the very hardest one to get is going to be on the very top here is this going to be right underneath um, the headlight and once you get that this whole thing will be free this is what the back side of the bezel will look like so right there on top that's going to be the hardest clip to reach but it should be pretty easy and it only took about you know less than five minutes to pull out so unless you guys really want to take off the entire bumper um, which is a lot more work but it does make it easier to pull those clips off if you guys need to but this way is totally doable just like you guys saw here so we're going to be taking off this cow on the very top part what we need to do is just push in these clips and then you can pull it just like so and then we'll do so to all of the clips and then we will remove this cow once you have the cow off this is what it'll look like behind it so the reason why we have this off is we have a little bit easier access to the back side of the headlight um, and the bezel down below and another reason is because we are going to be using a factory mounting location for the module so in the kit you will get this module which we have found a factory bolt um, right over here so to give you guys reference where I'm at this is the driver's side headlight this is the bracket right here for the headlight just look directly down there's going to be a couple 10 millimeter bolts um, that you guys could use we basically just picked one and here's what it looks like from the bottom so there's the module there is the 10 millimeter bolt that we used so that's where we're at so there's going to be two wires that we need to run to the passenger side one is one of it is going to plug into the actual uh, DRL um, itself and then the other one will have a yellow wire so this one has a white connector on it and then this one has a yellow wire with a uh, tap on it so we're going to run that behind this channel right here go behind everything and then we'll go over to the passenger side headlight and then come down with where the actual DRL bezel is going to be at so behind this bumper liner here we will need to look for the gray triangle shaped connector that is your turn signal so we're going to be tapping into the turn signal with the new Aiden James customs bezel so on the driver's side it is a yellow color wire that you're going to be tapping into on the passenger side it's going to be blue so with the provided tap just put it in with the metal side towards the wire then you guys will close that and then you will need a set of pliers to squeeze that to kind of make the connection so go ahead and squeeze it you'll hear a little clip that's how you know that it's fully installed and now grab your yellow wire with the connector on it and plug it into the t-tap just like so and then now that t-tap will provide your new bezels the power from your turn signal so do the exact same to the passenger side but just remember on the passenger side it is blue instead of yellow and then on the front side you will just need to feed that wire through the hole right here and then just like the factory bezels find all the factory clip locations and then just apply a little bit of pressure to have it clip into place 
and then if you guys have the white clips that you guys pulled off on the back side of your factory bezel you can reinstall that um, when you guys are done with all the other clips so just install it like that that'll hold that part together and then with your connector from the bezel plug that into the wires from the module once you guys have done that then you guys can clean out all your wires with these zip ties that are provided so next up we will need to access the fuse box in the engine so we got the cover pulled off there so we're going to go to the fuse INJ um, so with the added fuse here you guys will need to go in here and then there is a ground wire that you guys will just install right here on the fender wall once you have it routed where you will need it to go go ahead and add a fuse to the added fuse because it only comes with one and then you guys can plug it into the iron jake and then over here just take off the 10 millimeter then you can add the ground to that and then go ahead and tighten it down then you can go ahead and put your fuse box cover back on all right now we're going to turn it on and test them out so that's the white and that is the turn signal so as you guys can see here this is the switchback version so it'll blink with the turn signals and then when it just has um, the vehicle on it is white now we can put the cow back on so we can line it up with all these rubber feet and then with these clips you will need to pop them back up like so and then feed it into the holes and then push it down so that way it's flush like that so here we have a set of the amber version as you guys can see here so the headlights we have on it are the alpha rex lux series and then underneath the aiden james fog bezel in amber so the ones you guys saw before are the switchbacks so they're white when you guys have the running lights on and then amber when you use them as a turning signal but these ones are pretty cool so if you guys have like the morimoto amber headlights it'll go really well with these amber fog bezels but if you guys do have anything with a white drl it still looks pretty good with the amber that is it for this lighting video you guys like something new and different so you don't look like all the other forerunners out there these are pretty cool headlights and we've used them for about three weeks now um, on trail and on road so haven't had any issues with them they still function very well output is good so make sure you guys check them out we'll leave the product description below so just click on that and you guys can check pricing and different variations there peace